Coming to you from the studios at the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66, it's the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Rock and Roll Chicago, Rock and Roll Chicago, my hometown, well I was born in the city, gonna rock and roll city, rock and roll Chicago, my hometown, well I was born in the city, gonna rock and roll city, gonna rock and roll Chicago. Hey everybody, it's Ray the Roadie. And this is Hollywood Mike. How's it going? I'm doing good. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing pretty good. That's good. Who'd you bring us? This week brought you Stereo Fi. Stereo Fi. Not to be confused with the Hi Fi that mom and dad used to have. <laughs> you know, I tell that story every single gig about the old Hi Fi. Do you? I do. You're going to tell me again? Story for another time. Okay. <laughs> I'm willing to listen. Because this is about Stereo Fi. I've got nothing but time. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So who's joining us today? Let's pretend that we're, it's our first day in school in the sixth grade and you're introducing yourself to the, to the class. I'm Jeff. I play drums for Stereo Fi. My name is Ben Fosco. I sing uh, lead vocals. I do rhythm guitar and congas every once in a while, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Brendan English. I play bass mainly, backing vocals. He's the screamer in the band, so. Screamer? Oh, everybody needs screamer. That's right. So, where did this... <laughs> he threw me off when he said Brendan, because that's B-Man. Aha. Uh-huh. For sure. Uh, my nickname is B-Man. Okay. So. Yeah, it All took right. me about a year to learn his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no joke. I no think joke. our original singer still calls him Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it uh, because of a stupid incident? Because that's normally how you get a... Uh, uh, I got it. And it just stuck. I got it probably when I was just getting out of high school. Someone just started calling me and everybody around the neighborhood started calling me it and it just stuck. And then I started introducing myself is because I'm like, Brendan, they're like, Brendan, I'm like, B-Man, just call me B-Man. Yeah. <laughs> because and they're like, oh, I heard because, you. Because Brendan was too hard to remember the pronouns. Hard, it's, yeah. I guess. Is it the public school system we were in? It was yeah. a yeah. 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 growing up. Correct. <laughs> no, so, uh, you know, you never know. I, I assumed it was because of his name, but sometimes you get a, you know, a nickname because you did something stupid. I That's right. That you never know. So, uh, where did this all begin? How does Semper Semperfy? Wrong one. Semper Stereo Fi. <laughs> Stereo it's all my Marine friends out there. I'm going to let Jeff take this one because he started pretty much where we came up. So it was 2011, uh, end of 2011, early 2012. And uh, I'd put a post out or something that I was looking to join a band and Art, who's not here today, um, he responded to me probably a month later. Uh, sent me a text and said, Hey, I got this project going on. I think you'll like, and, uh, you know, we need a drummer. Why don't you come and try out? So I did. And, uh, it was an original project called, uh, spinning red. So we did that for some years. We had a singer named Mark. And when I joined the bass player, Charlie and, uh, Charlie left, we got another bass player and then he was around for maybe a year. And then after months of asking this guy, yeah, did come in. Yeah, we, we, me and Jeff met probably 2013, 2012, maybe something like that. Something like yeah. that. And uh, we just met playing shows back. He was in Spinning Red. I was in a band called Angry Mixtape. We clicked right away and then we, we kept in contact, went to bars every once in a while, did some open mics. And finally, I, I joined Spinning Red. We popped off. Spinning Red broke up. We played cover band, starting it off as Stereofy. Probably 2017. Yeah, we became Stereofy. Yep, it was it was a lot of uh, just me, Art, and Jeff playing by ourselves, trying yeah. to figure out what was going on. That kind of is how we have started. Where uh, I mean, Ben's the lead vocalist, obviously, but we all take songs. Unfortunately, yes, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we all take songs that uh, that we sing a lead on, and whoever uh, when we come up with a new song, whoever sounds best at it, that's. You know, that's who gets it. That's a pretty good way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> he, sounds like, he's, he sounds like shit, but let him sing it. He just wants to sing yeah, it. Yeah, we're not rebuilding the wheel over here. He really wants to play this song. Let's give it to him. Right. And I don't want to sing it, so. Yeah. So most no, We've got, you know, that's the good, the good thing about playing with these guys is we're all real tight and real close. And uh, there's no egos in the band. There's no, you know, it's do what's best for our show and mm-hmm. our sound. Right, right. Mostly cover songs. Yeah, we, uh, you know, with the spinning red, when we got uh, a guy named Sean came in after, like he mentioned, it was the three of us for a long time. Art uh, 
myself and, and B man. And we were just fielding the singing, the, you know, whatever we could sing, we would sing. And then, uh, this guy, Sean came along and, uh, good singer, guitar player. So we added that second guitar with him and kind of just, he knew a bunch of covers already. So he came in and said, all right, well, we can learn that and let's learn this, this. And that's kind of how it took off. Yeah. Where are you guys all from? I'm, I'm originally from Hoffman Estates. I, I live in Crystal Lake now. Okay. Um, a little bit up north. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Chicago. Right. All, all the way. Yeah. Also myself, North Siders. Right. So you guys tend to play over on that side of town or are you playing all over the place? Um, we tend to do better there or in the like little Northwest suburb, Mount Prospect displays, you know? Yeah. We try to cover just about everywhere. We're not, we're not afraid to, to play out wherever right. we need to or, or where the demand is. How many gigs you guys doing a year? We've been on a good roll. Uh, over the summer, we were having three a month and, you know, twice a month. Now we just had one Saturday. Uh, we got one coming up February 18th. So we're uh, pretty steady. Where's that? Because that's about the time this podcast is going to come out. Uh, you might as well, you might as well do a shameless promotion of yourself. Shameless promotion. <laughs> shameless self-promotion. Uh, that's going to be at a bar called Tony D's in Elmwood Park. Tony D's in Elmwood Park. Okay. Yeah, it's on Belmont. A um, little bit east of uh, Cumberland. Okay. It's actually going to be Jeff's birthday show. So it's. All right. It's so, little, so February 18th. How so, old? So, uh, 40. So people wow. can bring gifts. The if they'd like to. Yes, they could. That's good. And Tony D's, by the way, we're looking for sponsors. So we just mentioned your name. So tag you're it, man. That's right. Give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your favorite songs that you like to play or, or bands that you like to cover? Oh, Ooh, definitely like Led Zeppelin. Beatles, stuff like that, you know. We do a lot of Pink Floyd. We do a lot of Floyd. Try to do some Rolling Stones, but I, I feel like Jeff's not really <laughs> into it too much. I'm trying to bring the 80s back. I keep trying to throw some 80s songs in there, but whatever we can do, we can do. Now, I would not have picked you to be the guy to try and bring the 80s back. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting, his selection, because yeah. it's really off the cuff. You really, you don't know what to expect when he's throwing songs. So what kind of 80s? What, uh, what I'm thinking Robert Palmer. Um, wow. Uh, in excess. Um, these are some of my new choices. Maybe some uh, uh, Kenny Loggins. So, like uh, uh, no Messina. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, what were you listening to growing up? What what inspired you the most? My all my sisters. They're all older than me. I'm I'm the accident child. So they're they're much older than me. <laughs> so I, I, I grew up listening to like, I, I grew up watching MTV. Uh, yeah. Like that there was, uh, I had to wake up early to watch my transformers. So I mean, it was right. It was MTV all day as soon as they woke up. So it was poison, uh, warrant, um, Billy Idol. I mean, it's <laughs> all the eighties ACDC, but when Metallica actually came out with one, I mean, with, with a video. So it was, all hair metal, yeah. hair, hair metal. And isn't that metal. amazing? That stuff was called metal back then. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's you scary know? What, when you well, compare it to today. Well, there was, right. it's really funny. There was actually two classes. There was glam metal guys and there was heavy metal guys and that they, they could not mesh. Cause no, <laughs> not at all. No, but the stuff that they called metal back in the eighties would be like matchbox 20 today. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, it was, it was all, it was all pop stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. No. Was super pop. Sewer. But but that's uh, that's completely the the bands that you guys listed right now were just completely different in coming up with stuff like In Excess and Robert Palmer oh, and yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. but that makes sense because you're a bass player and those have you know funkier bass lines. Yeah, the harder bass lines. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Focal point. Right. What about you? Um, what do you mean? What about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can pick whatever it is like you like to talk about. All right. Well, you know, I'll 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 talk about how I uh, how I got into the band where. Uh, you know, before they went through a, a couple different front men. And then all of a sudden I've known Jeff since high school, since we were about 14 years old. Yeah. And, huh? You know, we've, but we've never been in a band together until this. We, we've always played separately. We've always gone to each other's shows. And then all of a sudden he came to, uh, to see me do covers at, a 
a small bar in the city on like Lawrence Avenue called Leland Tap. And we were, I was in a band called Wireless Waffles. And for the record, I did not pick the name. I did not pick the name. But right. I, do, I do enjoy the name. Actually, I think that whole bar was about the size of this room that we're in right now. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the, the classic city long, narrow bar mm-hmm. where it's about six feet wide from the actual cherry top of the bar. Right, right, right. But right. 25 feet deep. Uh, came to saw us during a snowstorm and thought like, hey, like maybe I'll call this guy one day for, for something. Now, do you cover all the uh, Zeppelin stuff? You're you're the Robert Plant in the band. Yes, I yes I I try to be. There's there's you can I mean you can't be Robert Plant. <laughs> right. You could only hope to be close to Robert Plant. Idolize. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's because Robert Plant is that that that's that's a hard sing right there. It's that's, a very hard <laughs> sing. Yeah. It's difficult to do. Not many people can. And you know we 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 don't play we, a lot of the songs we do, but some of the songs we put our own spin on. And, okay. you know, we jam it out how we want to jam it out and mm-hmm. still serve the song, obviously. But, you know, yeah, if, if we don't feel we're going to do the song justice, we're not going to do it. We're, mm-hmm. we're not going to come out and butcher your favorite songs. Right. You and know? I've told him to sing like Ben. You don't have to sing like Robert Plant. Sing mm-hmm. like Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Just make make it your own. That's what we do. And it, it tends to work out pretty well. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. It seems like you guys have a pretty um, eclectic set list. Um, what are some of the other bands that you cover? What when people go to your show? What are they going to see? Well, uh, thanks to B, they're going to see "Walk Like an Egyptian" from the Bangles, <laughs> and yeah, it, it's you know fun so, song to play. Tell me about great it. song to play. <laughs> Lots of fun, which goes over very well. Oh yeah, like people, you'd be surprised at the reaction you get to that song. Yeah, like right. it's it's very weird when you hear a band do "Walk Like Egyptian" by the Bangles, and then later on we're going to do "War Pigs." Right. Mm-hmm. By Black Sabbath, you know, and people just it's it's a, it's a curveball. But, you know, we do it well. And like I said, we're not going to try and butcher it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard anybody do walk like an Egyptian. It's one and of those songs that you, nobody wants to try. No, no. That's no. why I wanted to do it. I'm like, I don't think I've, I've heard it in bars. I've heard I've heard it in while I was working. I'm like, dude, nobody's going to expect a cover band, especially a bunch of guys doing it. Like, they're just right. not going to expect it. When he so. suggested it, I was very disappointed in him. And then when we played it, <laughs> he totally redeemed himself. <laughs> but it's amazing, you know, because some of those songs have shock value. Yeah. You know, I saw a cover band play. Um, 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 I can't go for that. <laughs> by Hall and Oates. Yes. <laughs> and I saw how. So now we cover in the, the band that I'm in. And. That's the one song that gets people up off the bar stools. Uh, they can be sitting dormant for a first hour and then they hear that Hall and Oates song and bam, everybody's dancing. dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We do a version of Crazy from Narrows Barkley. <laughs> right. But uh, very bluesy. Nice. And when it starts out on the guitar and everything, nobody knows what it's going to until he starts singing the song. And uh, Art actually does lead vocals on that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. And until he starts singing the song, nobody even has any idea what it is. And you'll see people's reaction when he comes in with a. You know, I remember when, and people are like, what? <laughs> wow. I actually do know that one. Does, it, does yeah. he sing it in that key or in that octave, or does he make it totally his own? He, he makes it his own. It's, right. It's in key, dropped. Okay. Yeah. We, we drop our guitar, we drop the scale on the guitar to match his vocals. Nice. Yeah. Yes. We, we give him the crutches to sing it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's great. <laughs> well, you know, where can people find the music? Because I'm sitting here listening to what you guys are saying, and I'm thinking, geez, I wish we had something right here that we could that we could play where can they find the music online uh the best we have now is our youtube channel you you know look up stereofy on youtube uh we have a select few videos on there um hoping we we had more very soon we we have been recording we bought a nice expensive camera to record our shows with good sound quality and uh we have lots of footage to go through and we're gonna start cutting up the shows and putting out more songs you know more present then right YouTube is just uh, finding the time to sit there and edit all the yeah. video. It's so, me finding the time to try and edit. <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, any original material anybody working on or have you talked about it? You know, we, we've we talked about it before. We've actually played some original songs where I played some of their Spin Red original songs. They played some of the ones from the band that I was in. Um, and we tried recording some of it. But with the way that it seems the uh, the scene is with original music, it's really hard to get out there. And, and when you do, you're playing to the other bands that are in the lineup for your show. Either that or the bartender. Or the bartenders in the sound on until midnight. Right. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's hard to yeah. gather people from, you know, we're, I'm 42 years old. It's hard to grab my friends to go out to shows like, hey, we're going on at midnight. 
and we play in Chicago. I'm like, uh, great, have fun. We'll, we'll see, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I'm in bed by then. What are you talking about? Yeah, as much as I would love to do more original music and, and just have the time to write it, it's, you know, we're, we're all adults with, with lives. We don't, this isn't the full time thing. We don't, it's hard to find the time for everybody. Mm -hmm. And even though we try to do it, at least we have time to practice and get together once a week, regardless. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So tell us about the gig that went horribly wrong. Hmm. And how'd you overcome it? Which one was that? Well, it's one of the biker ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because we saw those uh, those wrinkly biker boobs. They were like, I wish I could have that. <laughs> yeah. that. That was the charity show that we did. Yes, yes the, it actually was. Uh, yeah, but that um, one didn't go it's a bad. charity show. You can't expect but good the, boobs. No, the, in a show was, show. The, sh on. the show was good. It just I wish I didn't <laughs> see those boobs. Yeah, and we and we but, got um, we got cut off very early. I think we did about two thirds of our our show because the sound girl didn't want to stay. Or that, something. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, she had yeah. prior engagements. Apparently, you know. <laughs> wow. It was an early. It was an afternoon show because they went out on a, a bike run and then we started playing. I think it was, it was like four o'clock or something. Early. Five. Yeah, it was early. The sun was still up. So yeah. Was well, it was summer too. But I think it was like four or five o'clock we hit the stage. And uh eight thirty, nine o'clock, we took a set break. And the owner was sitting there, you know, buddy of ours, the owner of the bar, and I went up, hey Nick, you want us to uh do another set or what? Everybody seems to be hanging around. You say, hey, hey, get up. And she, hey, I got to go. And <laughs> yeah, like, okay, well, everyone's on fire, but you then, I guess. Talk about right. the single person being the buzzkill for the entire crowd. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> wow. And so this was like, this was just like a, like a poker run or a charity run or something like that. Yeah. For, uh, something like that. Like a or, birth, birthday or, or something Father's like Day or yeah. something no, like it, that. It was a memorial for somebody. That's right. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. So, hey, you, you turned it around because you probably just hang out and had a couple beers and you know, yeah. took off. But the worst show that I could remember, and it was uh, it was even before he was in the band, it was uh, Spinning Red. Yeah, we don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was Spinning Red, and um, I believe it was my first gig with the band, and we were playing at uh, Sylvie's Lounge uh, in the city. I forget exactly where it is right now. I believe it might be on Irving Park, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um <laughs> And we're playing and the bass player, Charlie, knocked in the arts guitar, knocked him out of tune. He didn't have his tuner or the battery died in his tuner pedal. <laughs> so instead of taking a minute there. That's why you always plug it in, boys. Mm -hmm. The bass player. The girls out there. The bass player started tuning to him. Rack him out. Okay. So now everybody's out. <laughs> and I'm back there playing drums. It's my first show. I just learned all these songs that these guys wrote and and. and I'm back there like, hey, I'm doing a damn good job. You know, this is great. I'm, I'm on. I'm remembering all this stuff. And afterwards, I'm like, oh, that was good. And they're like, what were you listening to? I'm like, I don't know, man, but I thought it was good. Yeah, what show are you at? Yeah. So you didn't realize that you guys were a jazz band. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Here's a tuning no one's ever heard of. Right. All right. So, so let's flip it around. That's the worst. What's the best show you guys have played together as a band? Together as a band. Yeah, but he got me. I, uh, uh, like three of us. I'm gonna, dude. That show we played on Saturday was was pretty epic. Yeah, I mean, that was a great show. That was that really was good pretty show. epic. And I put it up against the Cubby Bear. That the Cubby Bear was amazing show. But and that was before about, Ben was, was in the band. Ben. I think you guys are stupid because I was the crowd <laughs> at the Cubby <laughs> Bear show. Right. I wasn't in the band, but I saw it. And like, okay, yeah, we had a great time, but it's the Cubby Bear guys. Yeah, that was a great. That was an amazing. Uh, uh, probably five of the songs we played eight to nine songs, and five five to six of them the crowd sang. Like we, Sean would start singing, and then the crowd just. Took, I've never seen so many faces in the crowd. It was just the light. The lights were bouncing off them. They were jumping. It was. It was pretty amazing. We were. Yeah, at, we were on. Uh, on right when the Cubs game came out. So like all the Cubs game just rushed into the Cubby Bear and it was No, that was the Foo Fighters. It was before the Foo Fighters yeah, show. The night right. before Foo Fighters. And uh, they had a, we, there were four bands. We went on second. That was about prime slot. But wasn't the Cubs playing across the street? No, they were playing out of town because they had the stage Didn't, set up for Foo Fighters. What was all the blue shirts I saw that just rushed in when we came in? Probably the acid you took. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that show was amazing. But uh, on Saturday, we played uh, Richie's Lounge in Schiller Park and small place. But uh, it was packed. And it was, we, remember, we got like four or five inches of snow that night. 
we thought we'd be playing with the bartender. Like we really thought it was going to be like, the bartender and the one local that is dedicated to that bar. Yeah. Like, right. yeah. We thought, and like probably 50 people showed up. It was, I mean, it was, it was amazing. And they were, they were begging for more music. We played 45 minutes more than we we're supposed to. I think it we was, did four or five encores. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Two wow. songs each. Stop. Wow. <laughs> and what was nice there, they had, uh, it kind of felt like a, like a real concert. You know, they had a little staircase behind the stage and you go down and there's a private party room that no one was using. So that was kind of our, our green room. And green room. After the last song, we ran down there and they're up there yelling still and everything. And we're, we're sitting down there talking about what the hell are we going to play? We just, you know, think of the songs we got, think of the songs we got, what songs do we have? And we're yeah. like, we got these ones, we can do three more. And we ran upstairs and as they run up the stairs, they start cheering. Like it was, yeah. it was, it was oh. pretty concert. Like it yeah, was pulled, pulled off the three more. <laughs> then, then we were done, went back downstairs. The crowd was cheering. Then the owner was, I think we can get them to do a couple more. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. Right? So then we started really digging and pulling out stuff we probably haven't played in over a year. You know? Did the owner have his hands in his pocket when he was saying, I think we can get him to play a little yeah, bit? Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there were shots flying around. I all thought somebody day. handed oh, yeah. me the check during the show. Yeah. But it was a, a song request and it was a terrible song request. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was the weirdest thing is I'm watching this. It was the waitress. Someone must have wrote it down and handed it to her. And I'm watching this happen. And I'm thinking, is she trying to give him his bar tab while he's in the middle of singing a song? Like, <laughs> like, I, I don't think Jay drank that much. <laughs> I, I thought he was giving you money. That's what I thought. I thought it was the paycheck for the show. I was like, we got paid. We're walking away. <laughs> what was the song request? Um, what Gin was- Blossom's Jealousy. Ugh. Yeah, when you when you hear what we're what we're playing and somebody comes up with that, I'm like, what what show were you just at? Were you in this bar for the last three hours? Because I don't think you were. Well, you should have made it your own. Come on. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know where to start. With you know what? I, yeah, I would. I've played that song probably a thousand times. And really? It, oh, yeah. And it does go over extremely well. It goes well. over very well. Yeah, it goes yeah. over very well. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll look into that. Maybe. Yeah. We try to do songs. <laughs> we try to pick our songs based on the, like... Crowd appeal. You, you, not that, but you don't want to play the songs that every cover band in a bar is playing. You know, you go see one, you see them all. We right. try to pick a little more obscure, but not so obscure that people go out and smoke a cigarette when you play it. Uh, we do Pigs from Pink Floyd. We do... Uh, there's there's Green Eyed Lady. Green Eyed Lady. Loaf. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. There's, do, there's been set lists we've written, and as we play them, I'm like, uh, we'll scratch this next song. We'll put that on the next one. Let's do that. Let's set, like, we've changed set lists in the middle just because the crowd, of how they were at. Yeah, in the middle of the crowd, you look at the next song, you're like, no, it's the wrong time to play that. It's, it's, <laughs> right. Well, you have to. It's yeah. not a set list. It's a, it's a, it's a suggestion. suggestion. Yeah, right, it's a list. Right, yeah. right, right. You call aud- audibles and everything when you have to. I'd, I'd, I'd ask for, like, Captain and Tennille. Oh, perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if it's friends of mine, I'll I'll give some kind of off the wall request. Yeah, I, I hear Captain Antonio's the new free bird to shout. Out. <laughs> <laughs> the Pina Colada song. What's that called? Is it's, it called the Rupert Pina Holmes? Song? Yeah, that's yeah. Escape. It's called es- Escape. That's what I it tried is. pulling it off in a previous called- cover band. I'm going to let you know it does not go over well. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's called Pina Colada Berg. Pina Colada Berg. All right. <laughs> wow. So, uh, what about a little bit of your background before you all you guys all got together before Stereo Five was come to fruition? What were you guys doing? What were you playing? Before Spinning Red, I was in Angry Mixtape. It was just a 90s cover band that started off in 2010, I would say. Like, we, we started, we just wanted to play 90s grunge, just strictly mm. 90s music. So we, we were thinking, name of the name is you make a, a mixtape for, you know, that's what it was big in the, the 90s, was making tapes of everything you heard on the radio. So right. we uh, call ourselves Angry Mixtape because we played strictly just heavy grunge music. And before that I was in a punk band, several punk bands that, I mean, I couldn't even give you the names of them, but uh, I started playing bass when I was 17. I I asked my parents for years for a guitar, but they didn't think I had the devotion to music. (laughs) So I never got it. They know they be like, Oh, we got you something. Look at me now, dad. They bring bring me up a hockey stick. And I'm like, Oh, I thought it was guitar. You think you're going to spend right. the rest of your life playing music and fooling around? Uh, yeah, yeah. Look at me now, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I finally got a job when I was 15. Bought a bass when I was like 17. Started messing around. I, I didn't take lessons. I'm all self-taught. I didn't actually start learning 
the guitar. And so I met Art. Art taught me the neck, taught me where all the, where the keys are, where, where chords were. Where, I mean, it was, I'm 10 times the musician I was when I joined Spinning Red or before I joined Spinning Red. Like it was, I can't even explain this. And now if I play with a different bass player, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even near 10 years, I've been playing with this guy. So we know each other in and out when mm-hmm. we're playing. Right. He knows when I'm about to screw up. I know when he's about to screw up, we cover for each other, you know, and then, and, and I play with other people and I'm looking at him like, Oh yeah, it's not B over there. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> playing with, playing with different drummers. is different. Cause yeah, the, everyone's got a different, it's, it's almost relationship wise. When you have a, when you have a drummer, it, it's cause I'm always listening to him, always counting on him, you know, just somebody at the door. <laughs> Santa. And, and, if he, and, if, and if he's not on, I know he's not on. I'm carrying it. And he'll look at me and I'm like, yeah, that's you. And the same with me. You know, like, it, it's, it's, we, we gather each other well, but when you we play with other drummers, you know, they, 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 they tend to be cocky and think that you're the one who's off. Should the rest of us leave the room? <laughs> you guys alone? <laughs> you could. That's, yeah. that's my buddy, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, are you a singer first? Or a guitarist first? I would definitely say I'm a guitarist first. Okay. Even even though I'm not uh, well-versed in the guitar, I'm strictly rhythm. Like, he doesn't want to make it cry or sing. I don't want to make it cry or sing. No, but but that that's where I came from as uh, I was always a rhythm guy doing backup vocals. In the previous projects I was in, in a couple... Just random bands like called Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Or, yeah. Yeah. Great name, right? So he said he didn't think of the wireless waffles, but I'm starting to think there's <laughs> I a did think of that one. I did think of that. The, the common thread of there's these weird definitely names. a thread there. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. It's, it's the it's the inspiration. But you know, like I was always reliant on another lead singer, and they were they tend to always double as the lead guitarist. And at some point, like I think they have too much power in the band. <laughs> so, you know what, what they say goes, and I don't. I don't want to be like in a band that's. Uh, I don't want to be in Ben Fosco and the others. You know, I want to be in a band <laughs> where we're all together, we're all doing the thing. So at one point, I was like, you know what, screw it, I want to sing it myself. And then you know, I, I went into a couple uh, original projects called Avocado Llama. And 13 Stellas. I'm J.D. Power and you the associate. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so, so when they actually brought me in, I was like, well, you know, guys, I don't feel I'm a true lead singer. I feel like I'm part of the band. I'm, I'm more rhythm guitar that just so happens to, to sing lead. You don't you don't need that ego in there right. to, to just disrupt things that why that's why we gel are you, so are you paying attention i'm listening yeah. okay. are, are, you, listening? are you writing this down mike please i'm listening he must not be a good singer because he, he's, that's no. exactly right <laughs> <laughs> if you want mediocrity i'm right here <laughs> every time he shows up at practice you can see the look on his face like man i'm surprised i'm still here <laughs> <laughs> i definitely get the imposter syndrome you know i'm, I'm two i'm actually like three kids in a trench coat yeah <laughs> all right next <laughs> I, uh, just because you're quiet doesn't mean you're going to pass you by oh, gee, okay we did anybody huh oh, i'm sorry yeah. did you say he's the quiet one <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that's because the activities on the way here but uh yeah we won't talk about that um so i started playing drums probably i'd say around 10 years old i actually saw the movie song remains the same and at about nine eight or nine and uh saw john bonham solo and I was like, yeah, I want to do that. You know, I watched him do it. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And uh, here I am 30 years later and I still can't do it. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've been in lots and lots of different bands growing up and, and just I love to play. And honestly, that's, you know, I wish that I was making a living at it. I wish that it was my thing, but it's not like that anymore. It's not like it used to be. I think I always say there's no more rock stars. Dave Grohl's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I've been in and out of lots of different original projects, cover projects, you name it. And once I started playing with Spinning Red and Art, and he's he's such a great musician that he he's trained, he's you know schooled, and he pushes you. I mean, he really does. He don't he let does. you get by if you're if you're playing something just okay. He doesn't let you get by. 
Mm-hmm. He'll stop the middle of the song and tell you what you're doing. And I you, mean, it comes he'll, sometimes he'll you get, get frustrated. Mad. He'll get you mad. Sometimes. Yeah, you get yeah. mad, you know, and, and we love each other. And, and we'll say mean shit to each other during during rehearsal. And and then we laugh and have a beer afterwards. Like, yeah, I know I was messing it up, but it was making me mad. And then you saying something making me more mad, you know. And, and, and but he's so talented that like during the breaks, he's playing Mozart or like Bach on, 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 the, the, piano. on the keyboards. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, there's always one person that's basically the unofficial musical director of every band. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's usually pretty easy to spot when you're watching. You just yeah. know which guy is running the and whole he, show. And he, uh, you know, he drives us all. He drives us all to be mm-hmm. better. And, and, you know, in the 10 years, 11, 12, almost now that I've been playing with him, um, I, I look back at some of the stuff I did, even our early our album that we recorded. And I listen to myself play now and I listen to what I played on there. And I think, man, I wish I could have that back and redo it now because it, be, it would be so much better, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, just and playing with people that push you to be to be better is, you know, you don't want to be the guy that nobody's pushing you and 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 is and is professional and, and as he is and uh, and he detests to we hold him to a standard too. Right. I'll throw jabs at him, you know. Did they, we played Moby Dick? Hey man, work on those little guitar fills because you screwed him up last time, and he gets mad. And he's like, "No, I didn't." <laughs> yeah, but it's all I, I like defending how he plays cashmere too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't you can't tell a theory guy that he made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. don't tell him. But I like to poke, I, I, I like to poke at him because he likes to poke at us too. So it's all you know. It's all the love in the band. I mean, I don't think we've ever had a single where we left mad at each other or we no. were mad at each other or drama or nothing. It's just all. I'd say we were aggravated, but never like, it was more like, God, it's only because he, he knows I could do it. Most. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's nothing. Right. It's nothing personal. It's He's trying to make per- you better. Yeah. But you know what? And then it reflects on our show and it reflects. It makes you practice more. It makes it. It, that's all he wants. He just wants it. Yeah. Because I don't want it either. He's like, you don't want to go out there and play like shit, do you? I'm like, I, I don't. All right. All right. And no matter what you say, everybody's got a little bit of an ego. Yeah. And when, yeah. You know, yeah. When somebody bruises it a little bit, we get yep. pissed. Exactly. Yeah. Musicians have to have an ego. It's, it's like I said, I'm already mad at myself. And then you're, 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 you're telling me what I already know that I'm doing wrong. And now I'm more mad, you know? Right. Just, just cry. Yeah. That, that'd freak him out. You know, you know I've, I've tried that and, and he has no sympathy. <laughs> Curl up in a ball on the floor and just, you know, cuddle like that. No. He told her, what are you crying I, now? Yeah, I had to pick him up. crying in music. <laughs> so, uh, so for this year, um, and you know, you guys all have day jobs, you know, as, as a lot of successful bands in the area, you know, do, they're not mm-hmm. making their living doing this. And you guys are definitely at that, that, at that point in your lives where you're not relying on this, you know, you're not looking to get famous, I guess, is the, is the, is the, is the best way to put it. Oh, so, no, I, if, it, if I was relying on this for a living, I'd be living in your bushes, man. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's you. That's that, rough, that's that Russell. That's, yeah. hey, that's hey, why that the dog's barking all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that tent is quality cardboard. Hey, that's right. That's right. So, so that being said though, what, um, what would have to happen for 2023? What are you looking to happen in 2023 for you guys to say, hey, this was a successful year and we took a step forward this year? I would I would say playing festivals. I'd, I'd like to get into some festivals or even start playing up north by my house. Yeah, def- you know, definitely uh, a, ch- a change in venue, a graduation from what we're doing right now. Even though look, we love the places that we're playing, the, the crowds are great. You know, the, the, the owners are taking care of us, but we want to just kind of step up to that next level if we can. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was going to be my answer. Too. We want to, we kind of want to get into these street fests, and we want to get into, you know, yeah, we, Chicago. There's one every other weekend. They just, they just make up reasons to have them at this point. The hot dog <laughs> fest, and, and oh yeah, yeah. My shoes are red fest, and whatever they got, you know, <laughs> what I mean? day fest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pierogi Fest. Uh, I pooped today. I fest, whatever, fest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pierogi Fest draws people like Guy Fieri to the city, and that means something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've, I've played Pierogi Fest. That's a great festival to play. That's in my, isn't that in my, uh, in Jefferson Park? That's well, my old neighborhood. Uh, well, actually, I played a Pierogi Fest in Hammond, Indiana. Okay. White, Whiting. Oh, they do have a big one out there. Whiting, Indiana. Whiting, Indiana. Yeah, that's something the official like that. one. Yeah. That right by Munster, isn't it? That was huge. Yeah. Huge yeah, we've, festival. We've yes. played that too, and it's, yeah. it's awesome. So, who does your booking? Or do you use somebody? Uh, we a have a few of, promoters that we use. A uh, couple promoters, and then um, Jeff, you know, being a, the social butterfly that he is, knows a couple. I noticed his people. wings. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. They, they kind of bulge out of his jacket. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, uh, we go through United Talent. We get a lot of shows through United Talent. Uh, Daniel LaBelle, um, I can't think of what he calls his. Uh, oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, I don't, can't think of what he calls his. Yeah, I can't, rem- I can't remember his organization, yeah. but I get emails from him every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a few guys like that. And just uh, we know different, you know, we just reach out to bar owners, too. And why you got anybody? <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> In the alley. Yeah. <laughs> so where can everybody find you? You're the, you're the webmaster, apparently. <laughs> I, I, I tried. They can find us on Facebook. We also have the, uh, the YouTube page. We're going to start getting Instagram up soon. You know, we're, but as, as we play more shows, we're going to build more content, you know, try to get out there more, do more re- recordings. We've actually done uh, one, one recording of a parody song that got to be played on the drive. Oh wow! No oh, cool. kidding. For uh, cool. the first Sherman and Tingle in the morning, you know, one of the one of their little Q wins or something for the for the eight hundred five for the eight hundred five game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. I've heard her name on the on the radio once. I've been working. I've it, it, I'm, it's been playing. I've heard you know Stereofy so and then they yeah. they played the song. And I I didn't realize. It. So we mentioned the drive. Uh, if anybody from the drive is listening to this podcast, <laughs> to the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast is looking for sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Please contact Ray the Roadie. That's right. <laughs> Immediately. All righty, guys. Well, thanks a lot for coming out. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate it. Wish you guys a lot of success. This is a great awesome. museum you guys got here. I was looking around before yeah, we it's sat down. It's uh, yeah, a lot of neat stuff. Yep. Saw survivors or uh, yeah, survivors yeah, drum survivors. kit down there. Yeah. So the deal of it's if it's not bolted down, you could take it with, right? <laughs> yeah. right. I don't yeah, think right. so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have to ask uh, Ron Romero, the founder and uh, CEO of the museum. I saw him lurking around here in a trench coat, so you know what I may not mess around. <laughs> so if you pick it up, he'll, he'll just right. he'll leap out at you. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the shadows. <laughs> right, it's right. just so I can shadows. flash people. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you went back and saw it, but my favorite piece over there is uh, Terry Cast Telecaster from Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah, we well, see it. Go back and go back there and take a look at it. It's yeah. a, the, the phenomenal fee. I'll take you yeah. back there. Right, okay, the, the Blackhawk <laughs> Telecasters back there. I, I I have to come in and look at it, you know, and just kind of put my hand on the glass like that once a week every time <laughs> we come in. You can literally feel it. its power. Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> I understand. Uh, he was telling us Rick Nielsen was here and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Jim Peterick, Jim Peterick, Carl Jim yep. Reese, a uh, whole bunch of guys are here for the uh, installation of Gigantar, the sign that's outside. Yeah, that's, right. a, that's amazing. That's pretty cool. That yeah. is, it's pretty awesome. Very cool. Custom made. All right, guys. Well, good luck in the upcoming season. Thank I you very much. Hope to see you guys. soon. Thank Appreciate you very guys. much. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. a lot, guys. Take care. And that was Stereofy. See, I didn't screw up and say Semperfy again. No, you didn't. You know, that was... Uh, that was very surprising, very refreshing. Their set list sounds like the kind of band that I would enjoy seeing if I was out at a bar someplace. And I think if I really requested, they would do Campton and Tennille. They would do it. I think they, so. they, they, they would. They would figure out something like that. Yeah, Quite an sure. eclectic selection. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, pretty interesting. And apparently they have a following. People like that stuff. Yeah. And they've played some pretty decent places, too. So definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So get out there and see them, guys. It's Stereo Fi. You find them somewhere out the, all around the Chicago area. Probably looks looks like predominantly up north, though. But uh, take a ride sometime. So otherwise, we're going to see you guys uh, next week with another episode of the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. I believe our next guest next week is Grace and John. Grace and John. Yes, they'll be joining us for an interview. So uh, tune in next week and check them out. Until then, keep on rocking. And thanks for listening. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast is edited by Paul Martin. Theme song courtesy of m and Rush. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music heard on the show. The music is used to promote the guests that are featured. Rock and Roll Chicago!